All right, so in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making a low poly render very similar to this. This is one that I make. If you make this design, this is my Instagram, send it to me. A lot of you guys have been sending me your work and I'm enjoying that. So feel free to send that over and you can see a lot of my other personal work. So let's get into it. So for the mount, we're gonna be actually using an add-on. So go to edit preferences and type in landscape and then you can see add mesh ANT landscape. So click that and if you hit shift A, mesh right down here is landscape. And so once we have this, you have all these operator presets, like flat stones, or we have mountain one, we have mountain two, just things like that. And we're gonna be using this one. And if you don't want this particular design, right here in random seed, you can actually change the layout of what we're gonna be doing here. So if you use the mountain landscape, you're gonna get two meshes. We're gonna get this big one for the mountain, and we're also gonna get another one, which is the water right here. So when it imports, it's automatically shade smooth. So we're gonna right click, and click flat. So it's already pretty low poly, but we want to expound on that. And these are quads. So we're going to go to the modifiers and add a decimate modifier. So when it comes to this low poly stuff, the decimate modifier is going to be your best friend. So just keep that in mind. And we're just going to bring it down. And now we have some low poly mountains and we're already halfway there pretty much. And I'm going to click apply so we can do some things with the vertices when it comes to, it comes to shading. So we're going to do that. Next thing I want to do is quickly set up my camera. So I'm going to get the composition. I want to say, I'm going to put it right about here. So I'm hit shift A, add a camera, and then I'm going to position my screen how I want. And I'm going to hit control, alt zero, snap it to view, and then click on your camera. And I'm going to give it a bit of a white, a bit of a more wide angle. So something like this, sort of like a wide angle photography, landscape shot, kind of like this. And I'm gonna hit R and bring it up. And so this is pretty much the composition that I'm gonna be working with. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna model these little trees right here. It's very simple. We're just gonna be using cones. So we're gonna hit Shift A, Mesh, Cone. And we're gonna bring this guy over right here. And we're gonna take this guy, I'm gonna to go to the transform settings. And I'm gonna squash him on the Z and scale it down a good bit. So, so now that we have this, I'm gonna subdivide it kind of like that. And then we're gonna take it and we're gonna decimate it. So just like this. And that looks pretty good for the tree. And I'm gonna apply. I'm gonna hit Shift D, bring it down, scale it up, just like that. Now it's starting to look like a little tree. Shift D, bring it down, and then scale it up. And now we have, we pretty much have our tree here. I'm gonna take all three of them here and hit Control J and join them. Now they're pretty much one object. It's a little uneven there, but this is low poly stuff so you can make mistakes and it just looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna hit mesh and I'm gonna add a cylinder. I'm gonna bring it over here and make it really small. This will be our trunk. And I'm gonna to go to the transform settings here and I'm gonna I'm gonna scale them, scale them on the Z. Pretty nice trunk here. And I'm gonna scale it down. Just like that. And I'm also going to right, I'm gonna hit shift hold that, hit J, and I'm gonna join it to that object. And so now when we add it to a particle system, we won't have any problems. Last thing I wanna do is hit tab on our tree. As you can see, the anchor point is right there. And when it comes to the particles, we want the anchor point to be at the bottom of the particle. So I'm just gonna hit tab. And when you hit tab, the anchor point stays still. And now our anchor point is right here at the bottom of our tree. And you can test that out by rotating it. And that's where it's at. So now we have our tree, it's pretty cute. Now we can go back and we're gonna add a particle system here. So we're gonna click on our plane, hit tab, and now we have all these vertices. And we just want trees sort of in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to face select, I'm gonna hit C, and I'm just gonna go in and sort of paint the vertices that I wanna use. So kinda of like that. And now we have, this is where our trees are gonna be located in our low poly, in our low poly scene. Now, next thing we're going to do is right click and subdivide this area. So more subdivision will give us more trees in this area. It needs more vertices for our particle system. So that looks pretty good. Now we need to go over here, make sure you're in edit mode to our vertex groups. So right there, we're going to make a new one and then click assign. So that's going to assign these vertexes to the group or vertices vertices. Someone corrected me last time when I said vertexes, it's vertices, sorry. All right, now let's make sure our object here is selected. So we're gonna go to our particle settings. We're gonna click new and we're gonna make it hair. And now we have all this crazy stuff. We need to tell it to use that vertex group. So right down here, 
vertex groups here on density and select the group. And now they're only emitting from the area that we want. All right, now let's go up here, click on the render part of here in our particle systems, change it from path to object. And right here on right here on instance object, we're going to we're going to pick our cylinder, which is renamed for whatever the cone is here. <clears throat> now they're all pretty much laying down. So we need to go and, and click object rotation. And then we got to go and take our object here and rotate it. So go back to the transform settings and just find what needs to be rotated on what axis. Looks like it is the Y axis. So rotate it by 90 degrees. And now they're all standing up together. Let's go back, click on our object, go back to the particle settings. And right here, we're going to change the scale and make them pretty small. Let's go back to our camera view here so we can see what it's going to look like. So just like that, and then scale randomness, bring it down. And there we go. And if it's still not small enough, you can type in, say, 0.01. Let's put 0.005, and it makes them smaller. And then we can go in and add more trees in our environment. And now we have all these little low poly trees in our scene, and it looks pretty cute. And it also adds a good bit of depth in our scene as well. I'm going to go in and add our sun. So shift A, add an icosphere, subdivide it, kind of like that. Shade smooth. And let's scale them down and bring them all the way here to the back, kind of like that. Go back to our camera view and then change it some more, scale them up, just like that. And we'll keep him here in the third of our composition. And now we have this design here. All right, now let's go into shading this. We're going to go to look dev here and make sure you're in the Eevee render engine. I'm going to take off bloom so we can just shade. We're going to click on our plane here. And we're going to change the color. We're going to give it a green, kind of like that. Make it kind of dark, just like that. And then here for our mountain, we're going to hit tab, go into edit mode. And we're going to select the vertices that we want as our mountain, which is going to be gray. So we're going to select this area as our mountain. We're going to hit C so that we can kind of paint this, these vertices and select them. So we're just going to go in and select our mountain. Just like that. Now make sure it's still selected. We're going to make a new material. Click new and we're going to make it gray and click assign. So now if we go out of edit mode, now we can see this. Now we need to do this, do this again, but for just the snow, I'm going to go in and hit C and just select the ones that I want the snow covered area to be kind of like this area. And then if you don't want some vertices, you can middle click and un unclick those just like that. And that's going to be our snowy area. We're going to make another material new and we're going to make it white and assign it. And now we have our stuff. So you can go to the materials and say, I don't like how bright this is. We'll make it a bit darker and our gray, make it darker as well. And now we have this stuff on our sun here. We're going to give it an emission shader just like that. Give it a strength of say 10 and we'll make it orange. All right, now let's go click on our tree here, add a new material for that, make it green, kind of like that, and make it pretty dark. So now we have this scene. Now let's just click on this plane here, click new, and we're going to make it transmissive because it's water. And then we're going to bring the roughness all the way down. Now, what we can do to make it look more like water is hit tab, right click, and subdivide. And then we'll bring the subdivision pretty far up, say give it 100. And then right here on Fractal, just lightly touch it just like that. And then shade flat. And now you have some water. Now all we need to do is add an HDRI and a picture in the back to give it a sky. So we're going to be using HDRI Haven for this. I'm going to link it in the description. Go to HDRIs. I would click skies here and just go and pick one. We're just going to be using this as a light. We're going to actually import a different sky for the visual part and say, how about the sunrise one? And I'm going to go in and download the 4K. Now to import the HDRI for our lighting, we're going to click the little earth icon here, click on color, this little circle, and add an environment texture and navigate to wherever you saved it. So if I go into the EV render, you'll be able to see now it's starting to affect our scene pretty nicely. But of course, this is not an appropriate background. So let's go to Unsplash. We're going to get some free images from here and just type in sky. 
and say, how about I use this one right here and download it. Now to import images as planes, you're gonna to go to edit, preferences, and we're gonna type in image and click import image as planes, click that. And then if you hit shift A, right down here on image, images planes and navigate to wherever you save the image. Now before you import it, very important, click on the image, right down here on these settings here for the import, click on emit and just leave it at that strength and import image. So now we're just gonna bring it over here in this general area and I'm gonna hit Z rendered and then I'm just gonna go and place it in the general area that I want. I'm gonna rotate it till it's facing and then just place it around just like this, scale it up. And now we have our sky and it looks really great. All right, so this is pretty much the render. It's really easy. I'm gonna give you a tip here on the sun because we want it to be more of a sun and kind of glary. So I'm gonna go here to this shading and I'm gonna have a strength of 30. And then right up here, we're just gonna render the image. So now we have it, we have our image here. Go up here to the compositing window and we're gonna add a view node right here. I'm gonna plug the image into the image. I'm gonna click fit so we can see what's going on. And to make the sun very glary, we're gonna give it a glare node and put it right here in the middle of the viewer. So now the sun gets real crazy. So right here where it says streaks, change it to fog glow. And now the sun has some glare to it and it looks really, really nice. And then to export this, you'll go back to rendering right up here where it says render result, click viewer node. And now we have that sun and its glare. And then you can go to image, save as. And there you go. You've made a low poly render. It looks fun. It looks nice. And you can have some fun. And if you make it again, send it to me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. And thanks for watching.